Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy, also known as ETCG1, when posting videos to this channel. Thank you so much for watching, and hey, if it is your birthday, happy birthday! Yay! Here's a cake. Today's topic, torque to yield bolts. Why? And are they any better? And, you know, what's the deal with torque to yield bolts? Let's just go with that. These aren't actually torque to yield bolts that I'm holding up here. These are just bolts, head bolts, that I have from something that I'm using for dramatic effect. Feel the drama? I very recently posted a video about the cylinder head installation on the Mini that's behind me, and I can assure you, it is up and running. I've been driving it for the past, oh, almost two months now after that video was completed. No problems to report, it's actually been driving around just fine. Don't believe me? Here. First, let's start out with what torque to yield is. Torque to yield is a fastener that is designed to stretch uh, to keep a given amount of tension on a component. And normally you can identify if you have torque to yield bolts, like for instance on a cylinder head gasket, uh, and your cylinder head bolts and you're scratching your head wondering uh, why you have to buy new bolts or if you have to buy new bolts. If you look at the torquing procedure and there's a degree in the torque, meaning it says torque to 35 foot-pounds and then 90 degrees and then another 90 degrees, that's a pretty darn good indication you got torque to yield bolts and you don't have regular conventional bolts. Torque to yield bolts, as stated, are designed to have a certain amount of stretch. I recently had the pleasure of talking to a Honda engineer whose job it is to verify torque. Yeah, I know, the, an ultimate torque Nazi. No, actually, no, he's a really nice guy. Drives a Honda Beat, if you know what that is, you're cool. He was telling me about torque, and we were having a discussion about this, and I was trying to get a little informa more information myself to pass along to you, and one of the things that he said that really struck me was it's not the torque, it's the tension. And what he means by that is it's not the torque that you're applying to the fastener so much as the tension that the fastener is applying to the component you're trying to fasten. So I did a little more research on this, and I'll put links to these articles down in the description because I find this fact in particular fascinating, and you're probably not gonna believe me. That's why I've linked these things down in the description, but up to 85% of the torque that you're applying, that twisting force, with your torque wrench uh, actually goes to overcoming the friction of that fastener and the threads and everything in that, in that component. And only 10 to 15% of the torque you're applying is actually being applied to fasten that component together. Think about that. So say you've got something that you're torquing to 100 foot-pounds. Like 85 to 90 foot-pounds of that is to overcome the friction of turning that fastener, not for holding the component in place. Let that sink in for a moment. Interesting, right? Then it gets into all this stuff about like adding lubricants. Like I usually put oil in the threads of, of head bolts when I put them in. It's something I've done for a very long time. Well, I'm coming to find as far as accuracy is concerned, that may be upsetting things. And it may create inconsistent torque values to some degree. Haha, <laughs> pun intended. So this is why companies like ARP, whose job it is to, to make fasteners, that's what they do. In fact, uh, I just finished putting uh, the engine and the Fairmont back together, and I was putting the head bolts and everything together, and ARP has a special lubricant. It's like a molly-based lubricant that you apply to the threads of those fasteners before you do your torque. And the reason for this is, is so that you can get a very accurate torque. Because remember, 85% of that twisting force is to overcome the friction of that fastener. <laughs> so, so they have special lubricants for this and this is why they have it. And I found this very interesting. So let's talk about torque to yield a little bit. Torque to yield, those bolts are designed to be elastic. They're designed to stretch. So this is why you have to replace them because this is, this is why we're all scratching. I had to go to BMW to get a set of head bolts for this and I was spending like 85 bucks <laughs> and that was not cool. You can get them cheaper out there but I went straight to the dealer and paid dealer price. Yes, bend me over a chair. But I needed to get the thing back together because those are torque to yield bolts and the reason you can't reuse them is once they're stretched and they're pulled out, that's, that's it. Their, their elasticity is no longer there. You've got to reuse them and there's a chance that they could break, hence the reason why you have to replace them each time. So why are they showing up everywhere now? It seems like most modern engines are using torque to yield bolts. Well remember, it's not the torque, it's the tension. And those torque to yield bolts are very good at holding tension onto a component. If you're using traditional fasteners instead of torque to yield fasteners, 
If you were to have the same clamping force a torque to yield would have, you would have to oftentimes make a larger diameter bolt or alter that bolt in some way to make it have the same properties as that torque to yield. So torque to yield provides good clamping force in a, in a tight, compact space. That's what I've come to understand about those fasteners. And I find that very interesting. And they are using them more and more. Engines are getting smaller, have been getting smaller for some time. The sucky part is, is when we go to replace, say, a cylinder head gasket or something like that, we have to replace the bolts that go along with it, or in this case, the crank pulley, have to replace the bolt that goes along with that. Okay, so my problem with torque to yield bolts is, say for instance, with the traditional torque setting, I go through and I torque everything down to the torque that it says, but then I go back to those middle fasteners and I find that with that same torque setting on my torque wrench, there's still like, a, like maybe a quarter turn or something that I still have there. Now the outer ones are fine, but it's just those center ones that I started with. With torque to yield, I can't go back and check those center fasteners after going through the sequence on the other fasteners. So. I will say this though, I've never had a problem and this one hasn't had a problem since I put it back together as I said I've been driving it for a couple of months now. So perhaps it is time to add a torque angle gauge to our toolbox because well we're seeing this more and more. Now me with 90 degree angles, I don't really sweat it too much. Um, as you saw in that video I just sort of eyeball it. Once again it's the tension not the torque and I'm not going for an exact torque value. I'm going for a given tension or a given stretch to that torque to yield bolt in order to achieve the proper clamping force. This gets, this rabbit hole goes very, very deep and I'm only scratching the surface here and only spitting out some facts to you. But I'll link in the description some of the articles that I found about this, which I found interesting, uh, that provided useful information from people that know way more than me. <laughs> Although I'm here to get the conversation started and I feel I've done that. So my job here is done. I've made a video. Congratulations. Hey, if you have automotive questions, I'll put a link in the description too, Eric thecarguide.com, which is where I ask you to go to get those questions addressed. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, do all those things that help me make a living. I really appreciate that. ETCG1 videos get posted on Mondays. Doesn't matter when you watch them, but if you want to see the latest ones, stop back on Monday. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. How do I go back with a degree and say, oh, <coughs> 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 Uh, <coughs> don't eat almonds before doing ETCG1 videos where you have to talk. <laughs>